Welcome, this is where nerds come to learn things. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. Right, now back on, let's see what we got. Ah, it's a lens. This is for something which I've got on the way. 0.7 to 4.5. What's this bit? It's another little lens. 0.35. It's for a microscope I've got on the way. I've decided to get a decent microscope like a um, HDMI one. Dave featured it on his channel recently and thought that looks really good because it's got all those uh, focusing and stuff like that on it. So I thought that looks like a um, really good thing to have instead of this little USB one I've got. Well, it's from RS, so it could be capacitors. It probably isn't, but it could be. So much packaging. What do they need the past? What do they need that for? Why did you just put the bag inside the bag? It's ridiculous. Look. Seriously? Why? I was asked for feedback recently. Um, the you know generic surveys, and one of my bits of feedback was get rid of all the packaging. I mean, why? Just how unnecessary was all this? What we got? Uh, TO072 CD, which is some op amp things, I think, and LM358M, which are op amps. And um, these are just parts which I thought I was going to need for this power supply I've got sitting over here. Turns out I didn't need them, but um, I'll use them for something in the future, I'm sure. These are quite common parts. I know the LM358s I've used before, but in a larger style, so these are the, obviously the service mount package. So I expect I will be using those in the future at some point. And these are some precision resistors. The show ones. What's that on there? 100 ohm, 10 kilo ohm, and 100 kilo ohm. Right, 0.01% precision resistors. I wanted to have some more reference resistors when I'm doing things. So recently, um, who was it? Voltlog did a video. We built a reference box, and I was actually already thinking of building one at the time I did that video. And I may not actually make one, I don't know, but um, there's, I was actually originally looking at getting a fluke resistance calibrator. Right, they've basically got a, a big box with lots of fixed value resistors in it, and it just tells you on the front panel what that resistance value actually is, and then you calibrate gear to give that resistance reading. That's how they work. Um, but they've got these really high precision resistors and they're you know, really super high quality stuff and they're quite expensive. And I was thinking, well, I don't really need that level of precision. Um, so I thought, let's get some precision resistors and um, I'll make something. I may make it electronically controlled with a readout. That's entirely possible um, just to replicate what the Fluke one does. I might just make a little project like that with, with an Arduino and a display and that sort of stuff. Entirely possible, but I'm not planning on doing it just yet, but in the future I'll do something with that. So I'm just building parts together right now, as, as I get the opportunities. Right, let's see what's in here. This is a selection of stencils for various iPhones and the like. So. I think I actually got more than one set, just as a precaution. So we've got iPhone 4, 4S, 5, 5S, SE, 6, 6 Plus, 6S, 6S Plus, Seven, seven, Pierce. <laughs> I think they mean plus. iPad, as well. It would seem. 
because I've got this phone here which has a issue with touch so the screen doesn't always sense being touched it, it's intermittent um, it, it can work one second then not the next I've ordered a replacement screen I'm hoping it is the screen because that would be a simple fix if it isn't the screen I need to reflow the touch IC I'll take the touch IC off and reball it and put it back on again super fine work and I need the, the stencils to do that job this is a uh, 5S Hopefully it's the screen, but if it's not, I've got the stuff I need to do the job. I'll stick links down below for all this stuff anyway, in case anyone's interested in it. But um, you know, it's quite precision stuff. Um, you got to use paste if you sold a paste, which I've got somewhere. I have to find it actually. I'm going to use. I know I've got some somewhere. All right, see what's in here. Oh no, spudges. These metal spudges are quite nice, I quite like those ones. And we have a free frame protector. And this will be a screen. This is for the iPhone 5S, which I've got sitting here waiting for repair. It's one of two faults, I'm not quite sure which one it actually is yet. Um, look about right it does should be the right one it looks familiar I think it's okay Let's see what's in here not a lot auto couplers are oh, okay right these are the things which I purchased a whole bunch of um, HCNR 200s hyphen 300e these are the surface mount opto couplers which are used in the power supply this HP power supply I've got sent over here I've already replaced it I purchased a bunch of them and I kind of forgot what I was up to and I purchased some more so I've got loads of these things now I'm never going to run out of them <laughs> I've, I just hope one day I get something which actually needs them I was they're wasted yeah I got carried away again so this one Op amp, dual op amps, op eights, which are LM358M and comparator, core comparators, LM339M. Again, I bought these thinking this power supply might need them. I don't actually need them as it turns out. However, I've now got a bunch of them for stock. I'll use them one day, I'm sure. Again, I got a bit carried away. Alright, see what's in this one. It's M14. Alright, what have we got in here? Op amps. <laughs> Seems to be quite a few of them actually. Um, what are they? OPA 2277UA. Hmm, I think I might have carried away with this one too. Let's see, it's sealed, isn't it? Stack sensitive. Desiccant, humidity checker, cool, and then, so this is uh, moisture sensitive right, okay it's all really nice careful p packaging that sort of stuff, that's great, um, all that for two, there's only two devices in there, okay, once it's installed in circuit, it doesn't have any of this crap anymore, how does it really benefit, anyway, I suppose it stops it rusting when it's on the shelf, but there's only two devices in there. One there, one there. <laughs> Incredible amount of effort for two tiny devices. Yeah, okay. Oh well. These are for the power supply as well, because I thought I might need them, but it turns out no, I didn't. Right, see what's in here. Some RS components, obviously. Let's 
So these are MCP100, which are, um, yeah. Hold on, let's look this up. Supervisor ICs. 4.625 volt supervisor ICs. So once the voltage comes up to 4.625 volts, these will turn on a reset line. Or, or turn off reset line, depending on you want to see it. Um, I got these as a possible substitute for the Agilent power supply, um, where the original part is no longer made. So I've got I picked these up thinking they might do the job. So here's the part here. And get the thing to focus. All right, so it looks like a transistor, but it isn't. It's actually an IC. Okay. Um, yeah, I probably put a data sheet up and maybe overlay it or something, so you can see what I'm talking about. But basically, it, it, you've got an input pin, a ground, and an output pin. All right. Um, the input is the VCC, and it compares that voltage. Once the voltage reaches a certain threshold, it'll, it'll um, pull the output pin high or low depending on which particular device it is. I think this one goes high. I hope it goes high because that's what I need. So, yeah. Whichever pin it is, I'm not sure which pins it is. I might be pointing to wrong pins. Don't base on that. Right, let's see what's in here. We have some supervisor ICs. These are 2.93 volt STM6823 SWY6F. Now these are for the potentially for the um, power supply, the edge on power supply we're working on. But you can see these are surface mount parts. All right. So there's a bunch of in there. There's five there, five here. All right. So I've got ten of them. But I wasn't sure if I was going to need these or not. I was trying different options for supervisor ICs for their power supply. So I'm just collecting a few different versions and just see what happens. Service mount means that I could probably squeeze something on a piece of breadboard, you know, just it might fit nicely or, or not. Um, I've already got these ones here, which are a TO92 package instead. Alright, which are probably going to be easier to use. But I thought I'd get these two. No for selection. See what's in this one. Also from RS, so uh, could be some more the same. Or at least very similar. Some more service mount parts. These ones are MCP 100 t 300 ITT. So these are very similar to these parts here. Um, where is it? The, two, the TO920, uh, TO92 version. These ones here are 300. So that's 3 volt nominal, so these have got a much lower threshold before they will reset. I'm not sure what the T stood for, I can't remember now. ITT, and that's HI. So I think there was a difference which was the pinout type, that's what it was, it's pinout type. Obviously because this is a service mount version. Alright, so again, tiny little parts, sort of 23 probably, but um, yeah. I like to use these ones just for the ease of use, but right, see what's in the box. And how to get into it. It's wrapped in paper and taped up, so it's not as bad as I thought it was. So I cut the box for no reason. Just here. Oh never mind. No, excellent, you might notice. So we have a GPIB adapter. Right, so USB GPIB. Now I have never ever used GPIB, not even once. Never used it. So um, I thought a lot of my gear does have GPIB on it, especially you know, the older stuff it does have it. I thought, well, it might be a handy little thing to play around with for doing diagnostic work sometimes. You're trying to see what's working, what isn't. You can maybe do that. I know it's part of some of the diagnostic processes and some bits of gear. So I thought I'd get myself one. Now, this is supposed to be an original one. We'll see. It wasn't that expensive. It was surprisingly cheap. But um, it all appears to be legitimate. 
Well, that came from Malaysia, so mm, I don't know. And this is Agilent, not Keysight. But new in box. So is it a copy? I don't know. Is it new old stock? I don't know. Let's have a date on here. That might give it away. 2009. Print date 2009. So new old stock, possibly. Um, yeah. You know, it could be fake, but. Hard to say. I don't need dates on this. This says 2009 as well. So, yeah, I think it's probably right. So I'll be playing around with that at some point. So I've got a bit of a learning curve to do on that. I've never touched your GPIB before. Right, let's see what's in this box. what's inside so what is this thing Five thousand five a signature multimeter apparently there we go that's what it looks like it's just uh, that slipped around when I picked it up so it's, it might be a bit warm on the tilting bale it's just flip it around Fold down front, which has got cables in it. So it's got some probes, little hook probes. Now there's a few of these around, but sometimes they don't actually have this piece. I've seen them with like this piece has been cut off. <laughs> it's like, yeah. And uh, data probe as well, apparently. So it's supposed to be using for diagnose. Diagnosing um, HB test gear, which give uh, we do signature analyzing on it, so you can actually see what data a chip is seeing, and it gives you a readout and stuff like that. Um, that's what it's for, anyway. As far as voltages go, let's have a look. Yep, it's got its additional voltage selection options on the back there. Let's try and flip this around so we can see. the card in there to get out or to change voltages it's currently set for 120 I need to change it to 240 so I'll turn it around right. I won't worry about changing the fuse I know I've got anything that low I've got nothing that low I need to get some more fuses We'll look inside there, nothing rattling inside it, it's probably fine. I'm just going to power it up and see what happens. You might get smoke, who knows. Power on. You ready? It's got a little internal fan. Soft test seem to work. Cool. How do I use it? I've got absolutely no idea. Um, but I've seen it mentioned in service manuals for doing diagnostic, diagnostic work and things like that. So um, it seems to have working controls. At least those ones are working. Yep. So rising edge, falling edge settings. Don't know what that does. Yeah, I've got, oh, I've got no idea what any of it does really. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I have to figure this out. I don't care. Oh, no, I've got no idea what this thing does. But I have to figure that out. So it's another little bit of test gear. I believe it's working. I don't think it's got any faults. Um, I'm pretty sure the listing said it was working. So, yeah. That's for me to do diagnostic work on HP gear.